When we talk about the largest and most dangerous theropods of North America, tyrannosaurs are usually the ones that come to mind. But what was there before T-Rex, Dynamoterra, or Albertosaurus? The answer is Carcharodontosaurs. These descendants of Allosaurus appeared in the Upper Jurassic and lived worldwide until the end of the Cretaceous period. And coincidentally, the second largest predator in North America was also a Carcharodontosaur. We're talking about Acrocanthosaurus, the high-spined lizard. Acrocanthosaurus was the largest Carcharodontosaurid in North America. Acrocanthosaurus atokensis is the only species and therefore the type species of Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus was a generic Carcharodontosaurid, meaning it was more closely related to basal Carcharodontosaurids than to representatives of subgroups like the Giganotosaurini or Nevavenatoridae. Acrocanthosaurus was described back in the 1950s by John Willis Stovall and Juan Langston Jr. The name Acrocanthosaurus means high-spined lizard, which hints at a potential sail on its back, possibly reaching up to 20 inches or 50 centimeters in height. It reached a length of up to 38 feet or 11.5 meters, making it the second largest predator in North American history, second only to the T-Rex. New studies estimate Acrocanthosaurus's weight to be in the range of 3.6 to 5.5 metric tons, and some believe it could have exceeded 6 metric tons. Acrocanthosaurus stands out among other theropods because it possessed a sail on its back which could reach up to 20 inches or 50 centimeters in height and extended from its neck to the tip of its tail. This feature contributed to its name which translates to high-spined lizard. The lower spines of Acrocanthosaurus may have supported a hump of tissue running the length of its body. The purpose of this hump has been the subject of much debate. One theory is that the hump allowed Acrocanthosaurus to increase its surface area, potentially aiding in heat regulation. Another possibility is that it served as an additional fat storage, allowing Acrocanthosaurus to go for extended periods without food. It's even possible that the hump had multiple functions. If the hump was indeed composed of fat, a larger hump might indicate that an Acrocanthosaurus was a successful predator, consuming more than just the bare minimum. This could have given it an advantage in attracting mates. The hump could have also played a role in dominance displays between two acrocanthosaurs, with a larger hump signifying a more capable hunter who knew what to do in a fight. An acrocanthosaurus with a smaller hump might have backed down rather than facing what appeared to be a stronger and more capable opponent. Its skull measured up to 1.3 meters or over 4 feet in length and featured a fenestra, or skull window, which reduced the weight of the skull. Acrocanthosaurus had curved and sharp teeth, similar to those of other Carcharodontosaurs. The upper jaw and premaxilla contained a total of 38 teeth. The lower jaw's teeth were generally smaller than those of the upper jaw and could number up to 30. Another characteristic of Carcharodontosaurs is the bony brow ridge above the eye, formed by the convergence of the lacrimal and post-orbital bones. Computer reconstructions suggest that Acro's typical head position was around minus 25 degrees, which might have given the impression that Acrocanthosaurus was looking downward when it walked. A front limb of Acrocanthosaurus has also been reconstructed, revealing that there was a significant amount of cartilage between the bones. This is because the bones alone couldn't form perfect joints, necessitating additional cartilage to properly shape the limbs. Acrocanthosaurus' arms were not very mobile, they couldn't fully extend or bend extensively. However, it could retract its upper arm relatively far back, somewhat like pulling something toward its chest. As is common with large theropods, the forearms of Acrocanthosaurus couldn't rotate like a human arm, as they were naturally oriented medially inward, somewhat like clapping hands together. Acrocanthosaurus had three fingers at the ends of its arms, with the first and second claws likely permanently flexed. The third and smallest claw might have been retractable. Acrocanthosaurus was large even among Carcharodontosaurs. It belonged to the exclusive group of Carcharodontosaurus that could reach lengths over 10 meters or 33 feet, along with members like Giganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, Pteranotitan, and Carcharodontosaurus. Besides Syats, which belonged to the Neovenatoridae clade, Acrocanthosaurus was likely the only large Carcharodontosaurs in North America. Carcharodontosaurs first appeared in the Upper Jurassic and evolved into the largest subgroup of predatory dinosaurs in history. 
Acrocanthosaurus was the descendant and successor of the large allosaurs of the Upper Jurassic such as Allosaurus and Sauroforganax. Only when Acrocanthosaurus and later Seats disappeared did the stage become set for the Tyrannosaurs. But until then, the large Carcharodontosaurs ruled North America. Acrocanthosaurus primarily lived in what are now the North American states of Oklahoma, Texas and Wyoming. There's some partial evidence suggesting that Acrocanthosaurus might have also lived in what is now Maryland. However, this is not well documented. With a length of 11.5 meters or 38 feet, Acrocanthosaurus was the largest predator in Lower Cretaceous North America and logically it was the top predator of its time and region. It could adapt to various habitats but preferred to live near water. In Texas, Acrocanthosaurus lived in floodplain and coastal environments as Texas was partially flooded at that time. Due to its wide distribution, it coexisted with many other creatures including some well-known dinosaurs like Sauropelta, Deinonychus, Tenontosaurus, sauropods like Astrodon and Sauroposeidon, various iguanodonts and oviraptors. In addition to dinosaurs, it lived alongside Neosuchia, crocodile relatives, mammals, fish, lizards and turtles. When you consider the size of the animals, especially carnivores, none came close to Acrocanthosaurus, confirming that it was the top predator. As mentioned earlier, Acrocanthosaurus was the apex predator of its time and region, allowing it to hunt various prey, including ornithopods, ankylosaurs, and even sauropods. Specifically, it hunted sauropods like Astrodon, ankylosaurs like Sauropelta, and ornithopods like Tenontosaurus. Evidence for Acrocanthosaurus hunting sauropods comes from bite marks on sauropod bones attributed to Acrocanthosaurus specimens. It's believed that it particularly preyed on Astrodon and perhaps even the giant Sauroposeidon. It likely targeted vulnerable and younger individuals. But how did it hunt sauropods? Its jaws hold the answer as it was equipped with dagger-like teeth that were serrated and curved, perfect for slicing deep into flesh. It also had a powerful bite. A study reported that Acrocanthosaurus could exert a maximum bite force of 16,900 newtons, approximately five times stronger than that of a Nile crocodile which has a bite force of 3,400 newtons. As mentioned earlier, Acrocanthosaurus' skull anatomy made its head lighter, making hunting more efficient. Additionally, it had powerful arms and legs. Specifically, its arms weren't well suited for locomotion. Therefore, researchers suggest that these were used for killing. This theory is supported by the presence of three razor-sharp claws. However, the exact method of how Acrocanthosaurus used its mouth, feet and arms during hunting remains uncertain, leading to various theories about its hunting methods. Currently, the most accepted method is that Acrocanthosaurus would first attack with its head, using its massive jaws to latch onto the prey and then use its claws to prevent the prey from escaping. It's also believed that Acrocanthosaurus would pull medium-sized prey close to its body with its arms while for larger prey, it would use its arms to pull itself towards the prey, delivering fatal bites. And if all of this wasn't enough, it's possible that Acrocanthosaurus hunted in packs. This assumption comes from the famous Glen Rose trackway, which contains dinosaur footprints. These footprints suggest that several theropods were following 12 sauropods. It's believed that these theropods were Acrocanthosaurus specimens. Therefore, it's highly likely they hunted in teams, but not all paleontologists are convinced. Some point out that none of the sauropod footprints overlap, indicating no signs of a change in speed, which one would expect from sauropods being pursued. However, even if Acrocanthosaurus wasn't a pack hunter, it was exceptionally good at attacking prey larger than itself. Acrocanthosaurus was the dominant ruler during the middle and late stages of the Lower Cretaceous in North America. It's believed that due to the size differences, even Deinonychus, the terrible claw, posed hardly any threat to Acrocanthosaurus. No carnivorous creature could match Acrocanthosaurus. However, it disappeared before the beginning of the Upper Cretaceous. Why did such a specialized animal go extinct? As is often the case with highly adapted predators, even minor environmental changes or the extinction of suitable prey can push a species to the brink of extinction. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly what happened. It's a shame that Acrocanthosaurus never encountered the T-Rex, as it would have been interesting to see how the two largest predators in North America would have interacted. That's it for the Acrocanthosaurus video. You can find more content from Megaraptor on Twitter or Instagram with links provided in the video description. 
Image and video material for this video, as always, come from various sources including Julian Johnson Mortimer, so be sure to check out his work. To stay updated, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And with that, have a great day or evening.